This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show 627 Tuesdays. We've been talking about professional wrestling in a celebratory manner. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And we got a hell of a crew with us tonight, all remote, all over the country. Uh, with us, uh, first of all, the closest. I'm going to go closest to furthest to start off here. Uh, first of all, with us is Dave Podner in the uh greater pittsburgh area i guess we'll say of the tiny shutter podcast thanks for joining us and your cats of course of course yes of course you can't have a podcast without the cat no no you can't have a a a, a, a cat cast without it so thank you for joining us once again and then further out we have our our special guest for this week rob johnston first time on this podcast not the first time on a sorgatron media podcast and of course most recently the announcer on dojo pro wrestling that you can binge right now on Amazon Prime joining us. I'm so happy to have a reason to get you on the wrestling podcast. I know. Let's talk about some wrestling. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. I, I haven't seen you guys in a while, and uh, but a big fan of the show, so I'm excited to uh, talk to you. That's awesome. And also with us, he's out in Long Beach, California, representing OccupyProWrestling.com. It is Alex Cars. Howdy. I am very excited to once again cash in my Patreon in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> and just pop in from for n- no particular reason no particular reason no 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 uh no well, great to have you guys a great panel tonight and uh we're going to be talking about extreme rules we're going to be talking about dojo pro with rob and what's going on with that uh including a little bit about hulk hogan's in the news and in your history so i wanted to yeah. kind of bring that together we have a mad mic mail and uh alex promises to talk with us about e-fetting later in and and i don't know much about e-fetting and i guess there's some stuff going on with it so i'm excited to to learn about that here late in the show but in the meantime please everybody if this is your first time uh checking us out check out everything at wrestlingmayhemshow.com where you find this and the mayhem underground lucha underground podcast and the raw wrap-up and indie mayhem show our interviews with uh, people in and around independent professional wrestling that's been going for 200 plus episodes strong uh all that over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com you can drop a line to that email address Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Everybody's on Hangouts, so there's a little bit of a lag, so just bear with it. Uh, and also the phone number, 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Look up the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page and group. The group has, has been the greatest of our communities uh, going on over there. And, and we're on Instagram, too. And I've been asking questions on uh, the Instagram stories, uh, so if you follow us over there, please keep an eye out for that. I'd like to uh, have some fun with that, that new feature that's going on on the Instagram world. Also, uh, thanks to our streaming partners uh, over at the405media.com where they're carrying us every single night at 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight Eastern time so you can fall asleep to the sweet sounds of mayhem. And thanks to uh, our music by uh, Basic Sickness at basicsickness.com and look us up on video and audio formats in Apple Podcasts, Alex, YouTube, Stitcher, Google Music Podcasts, and uh, everywhere you can Pick up a podcast, put it down, get the podcast. Thank you to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. If you are pledged uh, for this month, you have a chance to win this Rampage poster featuring The Rock and George uh, on it. Uh, our fabulous prize that we will uh, give away. If you're uh, pledged by the end of the month, you'll be uh, put into a Patreon rumble where we play the Royal Rumble mode and designate you a number entrant um based on factors like the list and and things like that and if your computer controlled person wins you win this prize just by being part of the patreon uh club over there thank you to our fan of the show's dollar level bo diggity Woo! 
Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlos Foundation for Podcast Betterment at the Pocky Club five dollar level, where I just argue with Alex Cars this week about Apple Podcasts and versus iTunes. Uh, our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, Bradley Ruthers, Heel Bradley, and my thing went to sleep. Doc Remedy, and hey, Dave Podner, who's with us today. Hey, hey. Also at the Pizza Club ten dollar level, Billy Johnson and J. D. Jones. Billy Johnson won the um, unfortunately mishapped uh, blockers poster. Sorry about that, Billy. Uh, so I threw in an extra Tomb Raider poster uh, with that as well. The posters, by the way, um, thanks to uh, uh, cameraman Rob, uh, who's been on the show uh, before for uh, contributing those. We have some interesting wrestling stuff coming up in the next couple months uh, for giveaways. So look forward to that and uh, make sure to pledge and get your um, even a dollar gets you in the uh, Patreon Rumble. So uh, thanks to patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Help us keep the lights on here in the studio. So let's get into the wrestling, you guys. Let's talk about extreme rules. There's a pay-per-view. It was here in town. I think I'm the only one that went. Well, I know the chances since you guys are all across the country. Uh, but uh, we had a pay-per-view here in Pittsburgh. And in true Pittsburgh fashion, we can't have nice things. Because nope. we like to count. Damn it. <laughs> Bang. Shame. 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 You can't, you can't see it, but I'm throwing pancakes at you right now. Stop it. Stop it. Actually, I almost got hit by a pancake. They got some good range on those things. If Whoa. you're if you're in a lower bowl, you're in range, man. That's it went right over my head. Um But you won't have to worry about that in the future since, you know, we're having be. we're gonna only have house shows and you know. Yeah. Long, yeah. Long Long Beach, Super California stars. will gladly accept your pay per view. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get in Long Beach, Alex? Typically, we had a house show a couple years ago. That's it. <laughs> a couple it. years ago, jeez. But there's like a lot. Yeah, you guys have Staples Center not too far away, like Anaheim. Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, I mean I, to be fair, I'm I'm going to Survivor Series. I yeah. Mean, yeah. I mean, but my, but it's not it's not the same. It's not Long Beach. It's not Long Beach. It's not but again, like. But then again, we get New Japan, so kind of you know that, a that. Bit of a trade off. There you go. There you go. But um, so so all together, you know, being there, I thought it was a fantastic show. It was a lot of fun, a lot of great moments. And then we got to the main event. Um, and, and yeah, we did re- we did act up a little during the the Roman and, and Bobby match. Uh, there was a beach ball. There was some waves. I, but it was in the middle of the show. I, I didn't think it really detracted overall. Um, I don't know if it was noticeable on your side, other than the usual, probably. Like. Did- uh-huh. It was a, but you could tell the crowd was bored. Yeah, I think you yeah. could tell the crowd was bored, and I think I did remember hearing a "Let's Go Steelers" chant. I do. I don't remember one all night. Okay, to be honest, and there was a couple, couple that 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 kind of went through on mic. Okay. They probably, pi- okay. they probably piped those in. Let's they be piped honest. Those in to, to, <laughs> to cover up the wave. Oh, we got a cat. You got a cat invasion over there. <laughs> it's knocking over the mic. The cat wants the podcast. <laughs> The cat is upset about what happened at the main event. <laughs> it's like, this shit. Um, <laughs> so around the 27-minute mark, and I was curious if this was coming across at home, and obviously it was, um, we started counting down. We, as in the crowd that I was a part of, um, we counted down from 10 with our uh, mouth-made buzzard. Um, and then they took the clock down at 19 minutes-ish, and that made it worse because it was anarchy. We witnessed, we were right beside the production area, you know, where the little light, where they're controlling the lights and the music and they have the TVs up and everything, right? And the hard cams are right behind them, right? They were flipping out because they were still, like, the people behind there were seeing the clock that was going out. Like, because you could see the feed that was going out to the network. So we were starting the, the, we, my section was starting the time to get everybody else in sync. But beyond that, just people on the other side of the arena, I don't know if they're pulling up on the app. And whatever the time was there, which would have been horribly off because it's out of sync, right? Um, and you just heard countdowns for about 10 minutes when they took that clock away just randomly. So what you're saying, Sorg, is that it was your fault that you guys kept counting when the thing went off the screen. I had nothing to do with it except I just kind of enjoyed it. Matt Carlin's kept wanting to get up and leave because he couldn't take it anymore. Um, and I kept That's like fair. I kept keeping him. Like, I'm, like, I'm like, sit down. You're missing the match. Um, but uh, it, it was... It was interesting. And I don't think I've ever witnessed anything like that on that scale. Um, it was cool. 
Go ahead. You'll never witness it again. And I will never witness it again. No, no, no. We didn't do anything at Road, road what was it? Road Rules, uh, uh, Roadblock a couple years ago, right? Like, we were good. We were fine. It was yeah, an that okay was show. before WrestleMania. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. This was the one that was like in December for some reason. Like, oh, okay. Like two okay. Decembers ago. Okay. Um, so, so how bad was it on TV? It was bad. It was bad. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah. B, a million A's and a D. Bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Um, hey, hey, at how- least you guys were enthusiastic about everything. That's I the mean- thing. There was energy. Like, you can't get mad about there being energy, right? When when the match ended, <laughs> it was great. Everybody stood up and, and, and gave a standing applause for Seth at the end of the night. Like, it's not that... It's not, I don't feel like it was the crowd being disrespectful. It was just the crowd having fun at a wrestling show, right? And they had to stare at that big old clock at the end of the night after they sat through four or five hours of wrestling. So, I mean, you, at least we didn't get a Roman match at that point, right? And people were getting up to leave. Oh, yeah, that would have been horrible. Mm-hmm. That would that would have been absolutely horrible if they would end it with the Roman Bobby Lash, especially since, you know, the very next night we found out the match didn't matter anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's that aspect too, but, uh, yeah. but and, go ahead. And at least you guys didn't get Ray instead of Daniel Bryan. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think there was a little bit of sentiment because judging by everybody with their t-shirts and just conversations happening around me, I think half that crowd expected Hulk Hogan to show up. Brother. Brother. <laughs> yeah. Brother. Which is a you whole, know what though? Yeah, I would have paid extra on the network for a Vince cam. <laughs> I, I wanted to see Vince's reaction in the back. Well, judging by because I'm sure he's on the earpiece to everybody out there. Production guy next <laughs> oh, to us, God. the people over by the announcers, because uh, uh, the the guy announcer I keep forgetting his name and JoJo were like talking about him pointing up at the clock because they they took away the clock on the big screen, but they did they didn't immediately take away the clock on the upper screens. So people were still counting to that, and they took that down, and people booed again, and I saw him pointing up to that. At one point, uh, the guy beside them was teasing the guy beside us to give him like a roll of duct tape because the, the, the clock was still visible on his screen over there. That was inciting more counting. Um, yeah, I know, I know Twitter's not happy about this. I, <laughs> so. You know, I just, I just got a vision. I just had a vision, and bear with me for a second. I just got a vision. Of Vince McMahon in gorilla position, or whatever you want to call it. I guess that's gorilla, but it, and the entire Pittsburgh crowd coming to the back after that show was over, going to Vince, asking Vince, "We cool?" Vince saying, "No." <laughs> <laughs> the word is, word is what? Yeah, I don't get on that. Uh, Tina says uh, Vince wasn't even at Extreme Rules uh, from reports that were out there. Um, I love Carlin saying they should have sent Roman out at the end to punish us. Uh, <laughs> so Vince Camp would have been Vince eating dinner somewhere or something. <laughs> eating dinner or somewhere else. <laughs> He's on vacation for that one. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but it was a good show. It was a good show. It was a lot of fun uh, in person, at least. I'm hoping it came off uh, uh, that side on you guys too. Well, so let me ask you something. Did did I miss a um, an Elias thing? Nope. Maybe stepping out. Once, like having to step out away from the TV because it's kind of like, okay, there are three Pittsburgh people, active performers right now. Yep, Kurt, he never came out. Uh, no, he did. Or at the, he did. Or what? No, at the end, right? At the end, he did, and and he o- was backstage at the yeah. end. Yeah, Elias wasn't on, and Corey, being an announcer, probably didn't have much interactions with the crowd. No, he, but he got cheered. That's for sure. Oh yeah, when he came out. But it's kind of like, okay, um, it, it, like we talked about last week. Okay, you have Sasha in her hometown. Bring her out. You have Elias in his hometown. Maybe have Kurt come out more often. It is weird. <laughs> it, it, I, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Like, it, it, they didn't seem, as for as much as they did make a big deal about it being in Pittsburgh, there was a very Pittsburgh historical thing that happened with the cage. Realizing it's uh, twenty years later in the same in the same town, not the same building. The building is next door to the building that used to be, yeah. um, where where Hell in a Cell happened. 
uh, and McFoley, of course, was just here uh, a little bit ago. I believe they were filming for the network, whatever he was doing over at Mr. Small's Theater, um, which was sold out. I didn't get a chance to see it. A lot of us didn't get a chance to see it, but hey, I guess we'll see it on the network, right? Um, so there was a nice kind of Pittsburgh historical nod there, and I don't know I don't know if they really got into it a commentary. I would imagine they would have. But yeah, that's it. I, I'm with you. There wasn't enough like happening for that like not even like how did elias not even pop out right um it's like we were disappointed when when uh well elias did this last time but like the first time we went to cleveland before was it before mania or maybe the one before that even where uh uh Eli- all elias did was a pre-tape that they didn't even show on air they posted it later uh of him at the rock and roll hall of fame putting it down so i i don't know maybe they're just not big on the hometown thing anymore but I, I guess it's better than being embarrassed in your hometown, which was their thing for so long. That's true, too. That's just like, hey, we don't know how to so, be nice to people, so we just won't do it at all. Could be. <laughs> but um, other than that, you guys uh, watching at home, what are some highlights for you uh, from uh, Extreme Rolls on Sunday night? No, I, at least for me, uh, something that's like every time Kevin Owens is in a cage match, I get scared. <laughs> I'm sure he does too. Because I was I was legitimately scared in the match against Shane McMahon last year. Mm-hmm. Uh and, and just when he was walking around the cage, because it seemed higher than a than a normal cage when it was in hell in the cell. And when he's up there with Braun, I I mean it was crazy enough for Mick Foley to do it. But Kevin's a I don't know if he's a bigger guy, he just seems like he you know, I know they're trying, you know, you see the reports that there was some kind of crash pad underneath the table, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's still not a safe thing to do. No, no. There, there's a lot of distance no. there, right? Yeah. Like, you got to clear a space in order to make that table. Yeah. Like, yeah, no. there's a lot that could go wrong. There's some slip that could happen. I mean, we're 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 watching we're watching shows on the indies where we're watching guys that that are mishandling people just doing moves right and, and to hear something like that here you know see something like that um you know thankfully you know these guys you know obviously planned it out probably pretty good at this point too so um no so the crash pad i saw um somebody posted a video from the other side uh pretty high up and you can see the crash pad um, I think Larry actually pointed out that it was, there was a crash pad underneath that, that popped out there, which, yeah, I, I, they're going to do stuff in the, in the safest way possible. You saw it when Shane did, uh, did his drop at WrestleMania as well. Right. So, yeah, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather, uh, lose that suspension of disbelief for a second. If I know that, you know, someone didn't just completely crash through his, like an entire table or whatever. Mm-hmm. So you say about 20 feet up, um, don't they don't they still claim it as fifteen a fifteen foot cage these days? That seems to be the number that pops in my head, but uh probably like what or twenty twenty feet up uh for um hell in a cell most likely, right? Uh like uh yeah, they were there was no uh no Elias on the show. They were probably afraid the crowd would hijack the show. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it, and there was no like I didn't hear. There was a lot of Elias shirts in the crowd, but I didn't hear like any chance for him not being there. Enough happened with the show, I think, that uh, got people's interest. People were hot for the Ronda Rousey stuff. Um, you know, people were big for the other women's match as well with Ellsworth. Um, it was kind of fun to watch that situation. Um, <laughs> there was there were points, and I don't think they showed it on TV, but there was a point the cage like kept going up and down, like in the middle of the match. Like they were adjusting it for something, uh, which was really kind of unsettling uh, while they were wrestling below it. But um, anything else? They definitely, they definitely did not mention the cage going up and down. No, no, they probably ignored no. it uh, yeah. for that. Or probably make sure they got their spacing right for what they were doing there. Uh, but I mean, it, it was you know there was it was a show full of gimmick matches. It was a lot of fun. Um, the biggest disappointment for me, honestly, was that we didn't get a Jeff Hardy Shinsuke match for real. It's, so, I lo- I'm sorry, but I laughed so hard because I uh, I I turn I turn my attention away from the screen for those six or so seconds, and then the next thing I hear, I hear Shinsuke's music playing, and I turn around and I see him with the title 
wait, what just happened? Yeah. Then they show the replay, and I'm like, oh, oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was just an elaborate kick in the balls. Um, uh, Alex is at, other Alex in, from California is asking in the chat room what the dark match was. Uh, there wasn't any. Uh, they, they don't. I don't think typically do them for the kick since there's a kickoff shows. We did get the Sin Cara, Cien Almas match, which um, I think you guys got as well. And, yeah, the pre-show. And I think some of you guys saw the video that we posted of our reaction to some of the moves uh, because that was pretty <laughs> incredible for the good and scary ways. Uh, oof. Um, See, I was gonna say the dark match was uh, Elias versus Corey Graves. Yeah, reusing the steel cage. I well, mean, there you go. You had to be there, man. You just had to be there. Yeah, you had to be there. You had missed out on that one for for sure. <clears throat> uh, well, Extreme Rules. It was a lot of fun. It was nice having pay per views in Pittsburgh. I, I'm I'm going to enjoy my holiday shows and and dark matches and uh, house shows for for eternity now in Pittsburgh. Well, maybe they'll start bringing them to Wheeling. Who knows? Uh, but. <laughs> Uh, anyways, I want to give a shout out to a, uh, a long time sponsor of the show, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Our friends at, well, that's, our, that's my camera. Hi guys. Slice on Broadway, slice on Broadway.com right up here, uh, up Broadway in Pittsburgh, in Beachview, as well as down at Carnegie PA, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates and over in the East end of town as well. Our good friends, let's say we give them the mayhem bump. I mean, we had, they had one location when they started with us all those years ago. And good to see them uh, growing uh, as well. Let them know that the mayhem sent you. Don't kick the door down, Dave. No, 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 no. Gently push it in with your foot, maybe. Yes. Enthusiastically, but carefully. And say them. It's worth the pizza. There you go. And, then, and let them know that the Wrestling Mayhem Show podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, sent you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Tell them all that things when you get your pizza. Yes. Let them know. And and our our guerrilla co- campaign we're doing for them, if you have a Broadway Avenue in your town, take a picture of any open storefronts and send it to PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter and let them know, hey, here's a place for you to move in on Broadway so I can have my Slice on Broadway in my insert town here. Hey, Sorg. Yes. So we've got Broadway in Nashville, and yes. it is like the main drag. Yes. It's kind of like with why they call it Nash Vegas. I yes. think Broadway pizza needs like to be there, okay? I have been a fan of your podcast for years, and the last time I did it, they were a sponsor. They've been sponsored for years. They need to move to Nashville. I've got to have this pizza <laughs> near Not me. Not move. Expand. Expand to Nashville. You're right. You're right. I take it back. So if you find any I'm, space available signs on Broadway Avenue in Nashville, just be like, hey, Slice, it'd be nice to have you here. There's a lot yeah. happening. Yeah, I Ma- think they would do very well in Nash Vegas. Anyway, sorry for interrupting. Hashtag Mayhem Sent Me. Yeah, Mayhem <laughs> Sent Me. <laughs> Now, how co- how close could they get to Jerry Lawler's place? Is that on Broadway? I know he has two bro- he has two Ooh. restaurants, doesn't he? Oh, he, is he in Memphis? He one on Broadway? Or is he here? Yeah. I thought he had both places, but he may only be Memphis. I thought he, I thought he was. Everyone was trying to expand out. Lawler, I could Lawler, be Lawler peeks up every now and again out here in Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of in that backyard there. Do you get any <laughs> Memphis wrestling still out there, Rob? Oh, or am I do like? Like, Ask I, that question again. I say, are you getting any Memphis wrestling out there? Like, is it on you know, the TV still out there? You know, I'll be so honest. I'm so terrible at watching television. If it's not <laughs> streamable, it's so it's so bad. But I can feel the presence of Memphis wrestling mm-hmm. in, uh, in this town. A couple hours away. Is it kind of like how everybody here, every time you bring up wrestling, they remember like jumping Jimmy DeFagio from Studio Wrestling and Bruno oh, yeah. and stuff? Yeah. You just... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I mean, Bruno, God rest him, just passed away a little bit ago. And, yeah. And, when, and we had a lot of people at the studio that were, you know, sad about it. But I'm like, man, obviously sad, but he was such a legend. I mean, Studio Wrestling at the old TV station that I worked at uh, back in the day, they 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 started studio wrestling there in the fifties and uh, and so there's a lot more history to that so I feel like that 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 hit me a little bit harder I, I mm-hmm. miss seeing him around at events in Pittsburgh yeah it always seemed like he was everywhere jeez well at least you got mm-hmm. Terry Lawler there so <laughs> <laughs> what's that 
Speaking of Rob and his adventures, so so Rob, we have you on because you popped up on our wrestling radar recently. Uh, <laughs> there are much worse radars to pop up on. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> I, I get this video in my feed, and I'm just like, I know that guy being shoved by that large man. <laughs> <laughs> So and yours truly. We uh <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, hey, we, we should get him on the other podcast here. Um so Dojo Pro, we talked about it a little bit last week. I, I got through I think the about of uh, the first eight ish episodes of it. Oh wow, um, that's awesome. So because I wanted to definitely get more than just you being shoved around uh from episode <laughs> two. <laughs> so um so this really it, it seemed to pop up kind of out of nowhere. I, I, I did like in searching like I found articles from like months ago when they, I guess it was announced, but there's so much wrestling news these days that I think it just got of kind of lost in the wayside and it wasn't necessarily with, like with a big name or anything like that. And um and obviously you know it seemed like it was kind of a, a, a smaller production, but not in a bad mm-hmm. way, right? Yeah. Um yeah. so so tell us a little bit about dojo pro from from your angle over there yeah well i think that's the thing it, it is a smaller production it's it's done in a small studio like old studio wrestling um and uh it it's it's a lot of fun it was a lot of fun to to be a part of the production um and uh so not only i do the post-match interviews uh with these independent wrestlers so um and, and I also uh, have an associate producer credit on on the show. And so I've, I've been able to help with some of the creative elements and things and learned a lot about wrestling and have become, uh, I would definitely consider myself a fan. I was a fan as a little kid and I fell off the wagon uh, or is that what you would say? Or I fell, maybe fell off the train. I don't know what, sure. what you would say. Sure. But, uh, but when all that mess was going on with the, WCW and everything was happening. I was just like, this, this is a bit too much for me. Um, but seeing these independent wrestlers has been amazing. And so the way that this show Dojo Pro works, it's um, it's like a gauntlet style competition where 13 independent wrestlers face off, um, all uh, you know, leaning towards wanting to win the black belt is the ultimate prize, which also includes uh, a Ring of Honor TV title. Um, uh, match. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of pressure on some of these guys. Um, and honestly, just getting an up close, um, view of how this whole thing works and how intense these guys are and how, how badly they want this dream to happen. Just like, I would equate it to almost like bands or like, uh, people that travel around the country, you know, performing and maybe not for a ton of money, <laughs> uh, but get in there and and really, really with their heart and soul, make it happen. And so it was fun to watch the climb uh, as these guys face off. Uh, but it's a ladder. You climb the ladder, um, two wrestlers. There's one at match per episode. And uh, and so, yeah, it was it was really, really fun to see it come to fruition because it's a show that was created by an I mean, they're brilliant, brilliant guys, but at the heart of it, they're wrestling fans. Mm. I don't know if you guys have ever sat around and said, if we could create a wrestling show, what would that look like? And that's what these guys did. And they worked really hard to get it to where, uh, to where it is. So yeah, I mean, there's some, there's some cool production value to it. It also is like a smaller production, um, but it's bingeable. So that's my pitch. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a, uh, you guys on video, there he is in his uh, first interview in uh, episode two, which doesn't entirely go as planned there. I think we'll see in just a second here. Uh, he's asking the question, this fellow just won the white belt, the second one to take it. And Oh, there he goes. And get out of my face here. Yep, nope. Nope. You're insisting. You're like, I got a job to do. Nope. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Gunner Miller, Gunner Miller, that guy is a mean dude. They, uh, I, I mean, we've got some really, really incredible talent on this oh, season. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I mean, some of the guys you've probably heard of, some of them maybe not, but uh, Joey Janela is just a nut, mm-hmm. just an absolute nut. And it was so fun to watch him do that. Have you seen his stuff? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I've seen, well, I've seen, we've filmed them several times here uh, at IWC for the Super Indie the last couple of years. Uh, I'm actually going to see him wrestle the Invisible Man at the Gathering of Juggalos this weekend. Oh, uh, or sure. actually, no, is that tomorrow night? Two nights from, from now, actually. Uh, so really looking forward to that. I've seen some of his antics online. and But this is the first time I've seen Joey Janela um, 
like in a story in the promos like the promo he cut on james storm before that episode <laughs> was amazing about like how old he is and how he's not relevant anymore and how like look up joey janella on the internet on on instagram on yahoo messenger and aol messenger i was like wait a minute what are we doing here like it was like that is that this is where um i think i was mostly sold on joey janella uh, uh, yeah, he's, he's a master at cutting promos. And let me just tell you, from a TV standpoint, um, he went on and on and on. They cut his mic and he just kept going. Uh, lights go down and he's still going. I mean, <laughs> you couldn't fit it all. You know, you can't always fit everything you want to the show. I mean, he got mean with me. Like, yeah. He yeah. calls me a, a Nashville hipster on the show. Yeah. But he was going on about like, you fat piece of blah, blah, blah. Like, just went nuts on me. And so... There's not always enough time to get with this guy, you know, like with some of these guys have, have, uh, you know, the promos can go a little long, but they were, he's unbelievable. And what was cool to see him on this show is that he's been known as a stunt man. I mean, he gets thrown off a second story building onto a mm-hmm. flaming he, table, uh, with barbed yeah. wire. And, yeah. You know. He actually missed his first scheduled appearance with Super Indy with us because that happened the week before. He almost lost his thumb. Yeah, yeah. The man almost lost his thumb. And and so you you got guys like that who are crazy. And then you've got some more of this, you know, um, in the veteran slot, we have James Storm, who's definitely made a name for himself. Uh, Brandon Cutler, who I was speaking about a little bit earlier off uh, fair, um, who uh, who trained with the Young Bucks, grew up with those guys uh, wrestling in Rancho Cucamonga. And then this guy, MJF. Are you familiar with MJF? No. Oh, my God. Gosh, he's unbelievable. I have a feeling he's he's going to be a really big star. He's got a great persona, kind of a heel right now. And uh, yeah, he, he, he knows he's better than you in every single way. But uh, I think it's, uh, is it Michael Joseph Friedman? I think is his name, but he's uh, MJF. Look him up. Uh, Maxwell, uh, Ma- Maxwell Jacob Friedman says here right on the it. listing. Yeah, so, I was yeah. completely wrong. <laughs> I just know it was MJF. <laughs> he was he he was unbelievable. Shane Strickland, mm-hmm. you know, we, there are some appearances from guys, uh, some Ring of Honor guys, and uh, Jeff Cobb, who was you know Olympic mm-hmm. wrestler. So anyway, oh. it was just a really cool experience to be around these guys and feel that energy in the room. Yeah, yeah. again, again, people that are familiar to some of us here, Jeff Cobb just in Super Indie a couple months ago with us. Shane Strickland's been uh, part of the local promotions here in Pittsburgh. We've talked with Ricky Starks on the show in the past, so <laughs> so it's really cool to see some familiar faces getting shot. And, and and some of these I've never seen on like a Ring of Honor or anything too. Uh, Jeff yeah. Cobb obviously doing stuff with New Japan, and uh, maybe right. rumor is he might be under a mask in Lucha Underground. Uh, but uh, you know, and also <laughs> seeing a mean Jeff Cobb because he was very pleasant when he was here hanging with us yeah. for Super Indie. I mean, I know. I mean, he talked turtle puppets with Bobby F. J. Town, so I don't know, you know, to see see him beat up a fan in the first episode threw me a little bit. I know. Spoiler alert! You, you know these fans; <laughs> these fans get a little rowdy in the dojo, and uh, sometimes they got to be put in their place. That's so. right. That's right. It was, <laughs> it was, uh, it was pretty. Again, it was just a really cool experience because not only in production around these guys, but in post production, just working. Because I mean, we were working on this thing for about a year, mm-hmm. and uh, to kind of see it come to fruition. And um, Dead Spin did an article on it today mm-hmm. uh, that was really positive, and uh, yeah, some really really positive feedback. So. I, I appreciate hearing the what the you know wrestling fans think because shows like that aren't for everybody. Man. Yeah, no, no, no. It, it's definitely because it, it it it's got a smaller feel. It's got a different vibe. I love this ladder Mortal Kombat type thing that happens here. So it's like you know I, I've been very vocal about how I hate gauntlet matches, but I love this concept. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's the thing, man. It it, it was uh, you know even stylistically. Um, kind of moving almost to the 80s where you could kids could enjoy wrestling the whole family could enjoy wrestling mm-hmm. things it's mm-hmm. bingeable for everybody um and you know obviously you can't compete with the wwe and their billion dollar you know <laughs> enterprise um but it, it was definitely something where we're a bunch of guys who really love wrestling and want to promote indie wrestling and want to see these guys do well um you know, uh, with that at the heart of it, it's it's a really really fun show to watch. And I have a lot of friends who don't love wrestling that that have enjoyed the production value and getting to meet these guys in this form. So, 
I feel like I'm talking a lot, but I, I appreciate no, that's the what opportunity you're here for. That's what you're here for. And, and if you haven't, so so this is a good thing to get you. If you, you a lot of us have probably Amazon Prime for one reason or another, maybe haven't di- dived into the the catalog. But even like watching that and seeing, there's a lot of wrestling on Amazon Prime. Like I'm I'm seeing a number of documentaries that I've never noticed before. Now I will mm. caution you: some of it is not good. I've watched a couple of really <laughs> bad wrestling documentaries on here. Um, but. Uh, but but still, it's it, it's kind of cool. There's a you know something alternative that do you want to deep dive into? Um, they definitely have it over on Amazon Prime, and then this is uh, the first bingeable wrestling show I think has ever been released. So like yeah. that's that's another that's an, I mean it's a, it's a new it's kind of a new new concept, and it's really cool to see this. Yeah, it's been something, and again, that was really from the start of it. It was like you know, you can you wait week to week, or you wait for different things to 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 emerge online. And it was like, hey, let's release all twelve episodes, um, you know, at the same time. And and uh, again, you know, once you understand how it works and the the way the gauntlet style thing works, I think it really picks up, you know. And it's it's one of those things that's again, was really fun to be with. And, and really, you know, one of the main reasons I moved to Nashville was to work on this show. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun for the last year. That's awesome. Um, and, and, and I guess so you meant, you mentioned, you know, you kind of your history with wrestling and you shared with <laughs> me today, speaking of your interview <laughs> with Hulk Hogan from 2014. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> it was right before the crazy stuff came out. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I couldn't even be proud of that interview for a very long time. And uh, but I was I was a little Hulkamaniac as a kid. I mm. mean, there is footage of me with the uh, with the WWF ring and those giant rubber uh, <laughs> the figures that the old LGNs. Yeah, could kill somebody with a tag team with Hillbilly Jim and Hulk Hogan. So it was a big deal when uh <laughs> when I had uh when I had a, an opportunity to talk to to the Hulk uh himself, you know. Um and uh, that was right after um WrestleMania 30. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, so yeah, I got a got a chance to talk to him and fulfill a little bit of that uh that that dream as a kid to actually get to talk to him. And of course, this is on the eve of uh, Hulk Hogan uh, reinstated in the Hall of Fame, so it kind of leads yeah. into our next topic a little bit here. Um, and, and I, I want to know, yeah, I want to know what you guys think because <laughs> I, uh, I I kind of put my thoughts out on Twitter today to see if anybody responded to them because I'm kind of I'm kind of of the mind of um, at, at least in this case, uh, y- you can be a fan of Hulk Hogan but not a fan of Terry Bollea, yeah, right. Like I, I, I feel like you're able to compartmentalize that a little bit, because um, I mean you grew up on the cartoon character, right? At right. this point, and if Hulk Hogan shows up tomorrow and, pulls, and does a Hulk Hogan promo, you're gonna get like the old fanboy chills, right? Um, like that's kind of where I'm at with it. If we, if he would have showed up uh, uh, Sunday night, the place would have gone nuts, right? Um, I don't know. That's my take on it. It's tough. I mean, it is, it, it's a tough situation, especially, you know, in our climate right now with everything that's being said and Absolutely. done and all of that stuff. Um, and, and I always, I'm kind of of that mindset too. <laughs> was that the cat again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of of that mindset too. Like I, and it's probably not a popular opinion, but like for no. me, I can listen to Michael Jackson's music and separate that the man had a lot, uh, a lot of things going on. Um, you know, and there are some other, other people, uh, that have come under fire for their personal lives that I can say, I can separate the art from the human right. and what they've contributed to society and contributed with their work, whether they were great people or not. Um, I feel like sometimes I'm able to do that. There are some cases where it's completely ruined for me. I'll never be able to watch it again. Yeah, I mean, I mean but, the yeah. worst case is, of course, the Bris- Chris Benoit. And I think WWE has every right to not, mm. you know, glorify anything involving him since the incident. Right. The incident. Right. You know, the, uh, that's sugarcoating it. But I can still, you know, I'm watching a lot of old WCW and his matches come up and uh, I still enjoy him. It, it, you know, it, it's, it's been one Jericho has been one in Malenko. You know, that's an era that I grew up and was a fan of, you know, I can revisit that time before it was horrible. Right. Um, but I don't know if that's our form of coping as fans. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's I not, just... it's not a, 
it's not a uh I, I don't mean it to be a uh you know acceptance of what of what happened in right. either case. Right. And it's not an endorsement of that behavior at all. Um and and but but it is one of those things where do you revise history? Uh, because a guy like Hulk brought so much to the main stage, uh, brought so much to wrestling um, worldwide and and made it something uh, with his persona and obviously with the help of a lot of other people, just really did a lot for wrestling in general. And so do you completely wipe that from the history books or do you like, do you, do you honor that accomplishment, but not so much the man? You know, yeah. Can exactly. you can you honor an accomplishment without the behavior of uh, of the man? Yeah, and Tina's so. in the chat room saying, speaking from a different point of view, can't do that. It's not the same on a cultural sense. And yeah, I completely get that. Um, and, so, and I mean, they did kind of erase Moolah recently, or that is true. To, that is true because yeah, we like, and it wasn't like it was hidden what Moolah was doing. Mm -hmm. No one had to, and I don't want to think about Moolah having a hidden sex tape. God forbid no but i don't even want to think about hogan's Ooh. Ooh. no no one think about hogan's either but it isn't like you had to find a hidden table mula and say oh we had no idea she was doing this yeah everyone knew she was doing it and it was kind of eh, you know it happens yeah you know yeah. prostituting your girls yeah it happens in wrestling it was one of those things everyone accepted it seemed like yeah no I, one really did anything about it it's like yeah that's slimy yeah, and wrestling as a culture was really slimy back then. Yeah, too, unfortunately. Um, that was how the the, Mo, the bullet thing caught me off. Like I had seriously, like apparently it had been around, but I had never heard. It never came across that allegation before. Everybody went crazy about it over the uh, um, the uh, battle royal earlier this year. Yeah. So that that really surprised me. Um, this, this came out of left field, at least for me. But you know, I'm not really kind of digging in deep on those kinds of things. So. But so, so I, I do want to, <laughs> I do want to go on record and say, I do not condone. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely that that not. Has said in his, in his private life and what, what he is, you know, I don't know who he is as an yeah. individual. I just know his persona. And that's why for me, that's why I shared with you that little clip, because when I got to talk to him, it's a big deal for me. And he cut a promo for me uh and, and i'm like you're not gonna talk to all Hogan and not try to get a promo you know um and so i do appreciate his work uh, uh up to that point and and so but i'm not condoning obviously no 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 a guy like that yeah well it'll be interesting i'll be i'm curious what wwe is going to do with him because apparently he was talking to the superstars uh yesterday whether that but i guess supposing that he was here in pittsburgh i guess as part of that so uh, i'll be curious to see what they do to bring him in if, uh, I read some. I read some things about his apology, and that the 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 the, the, the camera crews were there for the WWE. Uh, yeah, for the WWE, um, and that that it could possibly be used for probably a documentary or something like that. That could be. Up. That could be. Yeah. It could be something yeah. along the lines of what they did with the Hardys about how they, you know, had had their issues and fall, fell off the wagon in their own uh, uh, ways, and maybe they're going to do some kind of. Uh, a redeemable story for Hulk Hogan and, and to try to kind of paint a better like or make it, I guess, a learning point out of this or something uh, yeah. some way. But uh, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, Hulk Hogan is in his 60s and grew up in Florida. So that's part of his culture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that's not untrue. You know, some of us that have grandparents that are definitely um, still have a certain way of talking. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I, I will say this and I'm not defending his actions. No, no. <laughs> But, but his relationship with other wrestlers of all different type of ethnic backgrounds mm -hmm. and, and things throughout the years, that was not something that came across. It didn't feel like this was that, that it, it, I think that's why I was, I mean, I guess I shouldn't have been shocked because he's that, that guy, <laughs> like, you know, he like, he, you never know what that dude's going to say. And after watching like that, that reality show and stuff, I was always like, Ooh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like Ooh, he's that, that, and that's, sometimes. that's kind of the point where I started separating the Hulk Hogan from Terry fandom. You know, because mm -hmm. it was really mm -hmm. like, oh, this isn't Hulk Hogan. This is Terry. And I right. don't think I like Terry. And right. then the, everything else that came out uh, from it, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I, but, you know, <laughs> I mean, it, sometimes it works the other way, right? Where, you know, Roddy Piper is uh, the nicest person you'll ever meet, right? He's not Roddy Piper. 
right? When yeah. it, you know, right, right. so the persona. Yeah, yeah. so that's it. It's uh, I, I think that's part of it. So again, okay, we'll see what happens with it, and uh, it's unfortunate, uh, but uh, uh, we'll see. I don't. I think WWE is going to be very cautious because they got burnt hard on this one because he was involved in a lot. Um, it just didn't stop with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. He has, he's had a he's had a, a, a interesting couple of years. So we'll see what yeah. happens with that. Well, and I mean, before we, it's like up until recently. I mean, recently, recently, it was always the character on screen and the human being seemed to be the the same person Mm -hmm. you know there was not well this is the actor who plays a role and here's you know it's like oh chris pratt pray plays star lord they're two different people they come out as two different people you knew they were two different people even if you disagree with the actor chris pratt over something per se you can say i like the guardians movies yeah or you know how many other movies he's in movie like what so many freaking hey, movies tom cruise but, is freaking weird but i'll watch mission impossible exactly. six or seven and i was coming out next <laughs> yeah. week so i mean exactly but until recently even it's like oh this is you know bubble ray dudley and he goes by bubble ray or even when he's not active ray wrestling you know and it's kind of like is or like the person Steve Austin versus the character Steve Austin. Mm-hmm. It, they're so intertwined. It's hard to say. It, it's kind of hard to to pull those apart. Right. right. Now it's a little bit easier because they're going out of their way almost to say these are characters. Mm-hmm. It's like oh. This is Alexa Bliss, the wrestler, but here she is on Total Divas, who's a completely different person. And it's so fascinating, too, because I've been talking with a lot of the local guys that are the friends of the show that we've had on and everything, and they're kind of how they perceive their character versus their person. Like, I've had one say, hey, this guy is the person everybody wants to see. Nobody cares about this guy, you know, what you know, is real, who he actually is. They want to hear about the character, right? Because his personal life isn't interesting, you know, uh, you know, tweets about him going to the gym and everything, which I don't think is bad for the people that do that. They're, they're pro wrestlers and stuff. I think there's a certain level and it depends on how you want that to be presented. Um, I think it makes sense to be, you know, uh, you know, Jason Gorey and you're this like creature, you know, a zombie character. And that's all you're presenting on, you know, you don't see him getting a smoothie somewhere. Right. Uh, you know, uh, versus the other, that are just, you know, to kind of more, it's them just personified a little bit in the ring. Um, there, I think there's a place for all levels of that. Right. So, um, it kind of depends on where you, where, you, where you're at with that. Undertaker makes a choice and doesn't do personal appearance or comes out of character until recent years, you know, and he held that for like 20 years, but it added to his mystique. He knew that was a key to his character, and didn't want that to be broken down. It depends, you know, especially if they don't have confidence in themselves, maybe being as interesting as what they're putting on TV or, or however that you make that distinction. Um, so it's all, it's all a little bit of part of that inter- interpretation, I think. So, Could you imagine being a heel, though, and getting stopped on the street by people who just hate you? They just can't, <laughs> they, 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 they are so mad. They have all the questions in the world about why you did this or why you didn't do that and how could you lose to so and so. Like, like it, it's still real to me, dang it. Like people, yeah, yeah. people like constantly like barraging them, and that's that's one of the things Hogan said in that interview was that it was tough for him whenever he was doing the heel stuff to come off of the the stage and 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 you know he wants to sign autographs and do that sort of thing. I can't imagine the life of these guys in the public when they get off stage or get out of the ring beat up like legitimately beat to death and uh and people still want to spit in their face. And then some of them go to Shania Twain concerts and get to hang out on stage. Um <laughs> Must be nice. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You guys Must saw. Nice. You saw. Guys saw the Kevin Owens video when uh, he got to hang out with Shania Twain on stage because it's, she's like his favorite, apparently. Which put that together too. Let's go, <laughs> girls. <laughs> oh boy. Well, in the meantime, uh, yeah. I was just thinking, sorry. I was, go ahead, Alex. I was, uh, the last point Rob made just got me thinking about. Uh, uh, kind of the good old days. You hear about like Bill Watts always telling the 
the wrestlers apparently don't get beat up in bars. Yes. Or you're going to get fired. Yep. Because we need you to be shown as tough guys in and that's out true. of the ring. Yeah. If true. you yeah. get beat up by somebody at a bar, that's it. You're done. I always go back so, to – also, I'll go back to the old story in Hulk's own book where he talked about when he was riding with the Wild Samoans, something about there was a gun in the glove box, which – people do and he didn't have a permit for it or it didn't belong to him or something like that he's rolling through new jersey and uh you know the the samoans could have got could have explained the situation and got him off from being arrested that night but they were worried about it getting back to vince probably senior at the time um about uh the samoans talked english to a police officer breaking their character (laughs) oh my (laughs) so therefore hulk spent a night in jail because what? of it, <laughs> well, they figured it out. Yeah, is that where he wrote? Is that where he wrote his rap record? Like, yeah, that's where he, uh, he had the hard times and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's and that was one thing i was i was kind of glassing over um referring to the undertaker mentioned in the chat room uh the undertaker harlem grove trotters <laughs> now everything's off the table they're gonna do whatever the fuck he wants right now and that's fine because he's earned it after all this time good good for you undertaker i hope you do that i hope you write a rap album i, I it doesn't even matter right now do whatever you want you've earned You've earned the rest of your life, okay? Whatever you want that to be, just be you, Undertaker. Be you, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I know he's, you're he's listening. One, he's, he's one flight to Florida away from being fully retired. But... <laughs> he is. He is, really. Oh, jeez. Well, if you want to be part of this discussion, uh, <laughs> yeah, Shania Twain does owe uh, Kevin Owens a song, too. Love to hear. Maybe I'll be his next theme music. Hey, if you want to be a part of this, you want to get out of the audience that's into this, which apparently includes Undertaker. Hi, Mark. Um, <laughs> if you're looking for some great advertising options that won't break the bank, advertise with us for more details on advertising plans. Please contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com uh, today. And that's hitting up uh, Mayhem Missy, who's sitting right over there. Thanks, Mayhem Missy. No, what? Producer Missy. Damn it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, thanks, producer Missy. We'll be right back with a big question and a mad mic mail after this break. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. We're back. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Guys, you know, I, the thing I didn't mention that segment, in the long run, you know what I'm mostly sore about? But they took away Hulk Hogan's rock and wrestling. I want to watch rock and wrestling in the long run. I want to completely relive my childhood and Saturday mornings by walking a rock, watching a rock and wrestling over some cereal. Okay? That hillbilly Jim always gets in trouble. But, jeez. I had the wrestling album on my uh, downloaded when I was on the plane for some of these trips. And it kept popping up the like intro music for it. Oh, and I was just like, oh, oh, this is great. I'm pretty sure. Like, I'm, I'm retconning in my head. I'm, I, you know, I, I always, I always, I always say that first, like Saturday night's main event with uh, the Blue Cage and Paul Orndorff and Hulk is my earliest memory. But I think I got into wrestling because of that cartoon. I, I really think that was my introduction. Easy. I used to, yeah, I used to watch it all the time. I had the, I had the like sticker book, the one where you like scratch, <laughs> like you like, you like yep, permanently yep. put these stickers on it. Man, I love that. Junkyard Dog was like my favorite. Junkyard Dog, Hulk Hogan. Billy Jim, they're all oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Wrestling Man Show, Rob Johnson of Dojo Pro Wrestling on your Amazon Prime account. Go watch it. Dojo Pro. <laughs> and 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 if you don't have Amazon Prime, the, the, the shows are like two dollars a piece or something. So if you're out there picking up your Lucha Undergrounds while you're at it, go check out Dojo Pro. Definitely worth it. Um, a really good show. I, I'm up to episode eight, I believe, Ricky Stark's episode. I think I was maybe starting Ooh. the next one before I had to bounce out. Uh, 12 episodes, very bingeable, uh, about a match an episode, 20 some minutes. So really, really good to kind of roll through there um, and check that out and maybe introduce yourself to some new wrestlers. Slam City, yeah! I don't know if it made up for rock and wrestling, but it was definitely appreciated. Also with us, of course, Dave Podner of Tiny Shutter Podcast and his cats. Oh yeah, we're all here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and of course alex cars of occupy pro wrestling and the jakar and 15 podcast yep 
I, I feel bad. I've been getting more Chikara guys than you have recently. <laughs> hey, I, you know, every week I keep saying, hey, I'm bringing, I'm bringing the shows back. That's right. This you is better. My, this is my, this is my weekly reminder that I'm bringing the shows back. Alex, you have my permission to take my Chikara uh, interviews and just wrap your stuff around it and repost them as your own. Just go ahead. You can just cut them in 15 segments and 15 minute segments well, and do your thing. Well, see, wait a minute. Wasn't that one interview like a half an hour? Yes, yeah, so that'd be <laughs> two segments. No, but see, uh, uh, since we're since we're on that tangent for a second, I just want to quickly mention something I I talked about on Twitter. Uh, I'm when I'm I, when I'm bring, when I'm bringing the show back, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently, and I was inspired by. A uh, fun podcast called How to Wrestling, mm -hmm. which has been mentioned on the show before. I think Eamon mentioned it before, but uh, inspired on that idea of like talking about different topics. I'm going to talk about a different uh, Chikara topic uh, in 15 minutes or less. So I just wanted to let you know, since we're on that tangent, bring up that that's going to be what's happening when when the show comes back. There you go. Eventually, keep, keep an eye out for that. Got to say hi to uh, ran into Fiddy in this past weekend, and uh, apparently he also met Honey Badger, and I don't think it went very well. Uh, if you check out uh, her her Instagram and Facebook, uh, hey, honey badgers eat cobras. Uh, just saying. Well, um, I think I reintroduced everybody here, uh, and of course, chat room going on Facebook Live here. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. And uh, oh, hello. Sorry, I'm getting messages from the gathering. We'll talk about that in, in a few moments. But uh, first, we got a big question. Kind of inspired by some of the stuff we were just talking about. Mainly inspired by Elias has an album coming out July 23rd, July 23rd, July 23rd. Hope that was the right date. Uh, which I'll be <laughs> listening to while I'm in Philadelphia. It's strange. I, I, it's going to be weird being in Philadelphia and not for wrestling. God, I, I got to find something wrestling while I'm out there. If anybody knows any Sunday night wrestling shows in Philly, <laughs> let me know. Um, but also a comment. Dead Man Rappin' from Wales. We're talking about the old wrestling album. I remember the, 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 the like, oddly, I remember rock and wrestling, but what I remember is the intro and all the uh, bad guy managers singing Land of a Thousand Lakes. Um, but uh, there's Pile Driver, John Cena. So I want to ask of you, our panel, which wrestling superstar needs to release an album next? Hmm. Randy Savage. <laughs> <laughs> he already did, and, oh, and he can't anymore. No, 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 no. no, no. Oh. Yeah, you want like the found stuff. You're, like you want like what? You want like the Nirvana found anthology of of Macho Man, like the the Be a Man Hulk reprise. Jeez, <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> Song. Okay, so wait, forgive me for not knowing. Does New Day have a record out? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know how you feel about New Day on this on this uh on this. We show. like them. Yeah. Uh, I saw them, I saw them live at a at a raw and they were they were awesome. I didn't pick up the bootios, should have done it, didn't do it. But uh they're still out there. A, they're still like out 70, there. Seventy five dollars a box or something. <laughs> yeah. It's like, like fifteen dollars for a box of cereal. Know. Like, are you uh, kidding me? <laughs> nah, that's all right. I'm good. I just, I feel like they could do something. I feel like they, they could have like a pretty cool, cool record out. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Why don't we do the Usos? They're already mm -hmm. dropping raps. I mean, they had a rap battle with the New Day. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I think they're very capable that the, the Usos could make it. I want a, I want an album of duets with female talent. Oh. So we can have the love song between Sasha and Bailey finally. Okay. We can have the iconic singing together. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlotte and Becky t singing about tea time. We could have, we can even do Natty and four pa and uh, two paws. Doing something cat related. <laughs> so it's gonna be like, so it's kind of like, like that like album, Mister Rogers, like from Mister Rogers. Uh, yeah. Meow, meow, pretty, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could have Daddy doing that. No, no, no. You have TJ doing that. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, oh, God. TJ uh, <laughs> as as. Uh, uh, no, I like that. What about you, Alex? You got anybody? 
Is any are there any musical uh, talents amongst the Chikara crew? He's he's muted. You're muted, sir. I can think of a few, but I was I was gonna take the easy way out and say I'd like a WWE Originals Volume Two. <laughs> just in general. <laughs> yeah, you know, just get John Cena doing another one. Get uh, get some of the new get guys. Get Se- Seth Rollins just, just yelling, that. "Burn it down!" for like th- three minutes. Uh, Bobby Roode's singing his his uh, entrance would be good. Yeah, that could be good. Though, except you've heard him woo, so I don't know if I want to hear him sing. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we need, um, we need a sequel to WWE Originals with C- CFO money uh, twist as Tina Keys. Actually, yeah, because that was a Jim Johnson oh, joint. Yeah. So let's see what the oh, new yeah. guys can do with them. But that see that also means all the songs on there will be um, thirty second loops that go over <laughs> and over and over for. We don't want none. none. We saying. don't want none. We don't They're want great. none. They're- I get it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's it's great, but that's what it is. It's all loop. <laughs> but that's all it needs to be, right? Um, and I'll still pick them up on iTunes. Marty Skrull says Tina. Um, Johnny Mundo says Alex Miller out there. Uh, <laughs> see who else is out there. I don't know what that one is. The Rock rapping about pie and thrill. Yeah, that was a good one. That was that. one from that one, wasn't it? No, no, that was on a Did WWE album. Funny. That was on a, like one of the volume albums, wasn't it? Like WWE the music, and then they had him singing. Yeah, and everybody realized, wait a minute, <laughs> they they're they're not all bangers, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but we also could have the 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 return that we're all waiting for, the musical group return that we're all waiting for. That that they that they teased us with the review of the WLC match. <gasps> oh. You, wait, 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 wait. He's not talking about together. three count. He's not talking about three count, is he? No. Different, different three group. I thought you were talking about the West Texas, uh, West Texas Rednecks. Oh, I don't think you can bring them back together. If I remember I, that I'm roster just... right. Hey, you could you could put anybody in any slot in any band. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, 3MB needs to happen. So uh, you never know. You never know. They're all on the same brand. You know, what, well, what if we just bring yeah, the wrestlers back? The same brand. What if we just bring the wrestlers together to remake the Pile Driver album? I'd buy that album. You, I, I mean, yeah, I'd buy that album too. Never mind Spotify. I'd buy that album. Yeah, exactly. exactly. On vinyl. What? Producer Missy. The, 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 the Miz is doing everything else. Why not him? There you go. It could be a Mrs. Mrs. Duet album. Love ballads. <laughs> Kane and Daniel Bryan. What about uh, a too sweet formation again? Oh, oh yeah. Boy. When uh, they got the elite doing, doing a musical act. That would be good. Oh, they did. They did. And there's that one track from Glow. Spoiler alert. You guys would buy a Glow album. All right. We do have a Mad Mike mail I want to touch on here real quick. He is really mad about Bailey and uh, <laughs> Sasha. Um, I'll try to boil this down a little bit here. Uh, Greetings, Mayhemers. It's that guy who used to email all the time and always started with the corny rhyme. It's Mad Mike. So let's talk about Bailey and Sasha. I didn't want to rant too much about this on wrap up because I knew we were already going along, but this just saddens me and I'll break it down uh, in a few points. One, we're not, no, we're no, it's Pittsburgh. We're not allowed to count in Pittsburgh anymore, guys. A, why is, why is storyline management forcing Bailey and Sasha to be friends? If Kurt said that they both need anger management like Kane and Brian, I'd, be totally fine with it but they have specifically said repeatedly that they need those two to be friends we literally have had male best friends turn on each other and do horrible things to each other all the time is this because they are women is it because they are scared to turn bailey heel b the segments and face heel alignment of this story have not been consistent at all from week to week first you have sasha pull a long-lived Long live the King moment at Elimination Chamber. Then you have Bailey try to sneak a win at Mania. 
Uh, then they are both fighting backstage, and somehow that translates into Sasha saying that she all, she she always has loved Bailey. What is this a friendship love? Because it doesn't seem like it. Is it a deeper kind of love? Because it doesn't seem like it either. I went to sleep. Um, is it the the computer went to sleep? Not me. Um, is it a deeper kind of love? Because it doesn't. No, no, I read that part. I'm begging them to get someone who understands these characters to write for them. C. How, I'm trying not to count. How did they take two characters that I shed a tear over at TakeOver less than four years ago and get them to uh, the point where I really don't want to see either of them on the screen? And four, can't we just move Bailey to SmackDown and Becky to Raw and be done with this? Sorry for the long email. It just saddens me. Way out Mr. Ending, ending transmission. I am confused by it. It's so spotty from week to week, or we don't see them for two weeks. Uh, I was saying last night on a wrap-up, it feels like we have um, taken a soap opera and stretched it out to two-minute segments across a three-hour show off, uh, across uh, uh, several months. And I don't think that works. No. no. I mean, I have a friend at work who is a wrestling fan who's gay. And we talk, you know, we both go for coffee in the morning. We just kind of talk, you know, we're all SmackDown, just whatever. And he said, I'm legitimately angry over the Bailey Sasha because of how they hint over, like you said, they hit, to me, it was more than a hint when mm -hmm. she said, I love you. Yeah. That was more, that, that was, that was stronger than you, my bro, you, you, my boo boo, you know, it was more than just, you're my good friend and I love you as a friend that felt stronger. Right. Versus like you have like the Iconics kind of doing this holding hands thing on SmackDown, yeah. which just seems kind of like, Hey, wait a minute. You know, um, yeah. And there is no explanation. You're just kind of left with that. But again, I feel like it gets lost in the shuffle of everything going on. Uh, and it's been so weird and inconsistent since like before WrestleMania. You know, um, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Like on so many levels, like what they're doing with this. Like I was worried about the woke and broken thing getting lost in the shuffle. But I think that's kind of come around to as much as it's going to come around to on, on raw from week to week, um, you know, being something that's not involving a Roman reigns or Brock Lesnar, apparently. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it just, it, it feels so, Oh, Mike's in the chat room. I, I literally just oh. got home and checked to see where, if we were still recording. Yep. Yeah, just for me to read his thing. <laughs> yeah, that, that and Mike, timing and a half. And Mike, you know, you're not supposed to let me count in Pittsburgh anymore. <laughs> Stop putting numbers in your emails. And nine, no, yeah. no, no. Ah. Um, jeez. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what more to say about that. Of course, you know, Mike has kind of grander. I, I, when, from our discussions, Mike and I have on Raw wrap up. Like he gets perturbed at the at the consistency and the um the uh the writing and and everything that happens on Raw. And I just have little expectations for that. Oh, we we were watching a Raw from like 1997. Man, I don't think the consistency was there very good back then. Um, but of course, they're on a different uh, counting up is okay. Who says? Are you sure about that? But uh, anyways, well, we'll see what happens with Sasha and Bailey if it starts coming around. If it makes sense, if this doesn't end at SummerSlam, I'm going to be. I, we should have ended at, at Mania, I thought. Um, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Well, we know what we really have to have at SummerSlam. We have to have. Brock turning to Roman after Roman lose after Roman beats him and say, "Man, you know this is all about my my suppressed love for you, man. You you my bro, Roman. You're my bro. Oh, you're my boo, boo. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. It could be. Actually, actually, I think the Braun and Kevin Owens one will be more likely to turn that way, right? Anyways, I don't know. Do you want to read your ad copy, Alex? at this point um alex is here he represents occupy pro wrestling we've given him some free plugs here through the show because he's hanging out with us and he's a patreon supporter but do you know pro wrestling is a crazy uh and art a uh, wild art form as we've discussed tonight for sure uh and occupy pro wrestling is here to look at what makes it fun featuring uh articles blogs and a podcast that whoop, that's not the right thing there it is there is the website. Um, articles, blogs, and a podcast that brings you interviews with fellow fans. Occupy Pro Wrestling is putting the smart back in Smart Mark. 
You can check it out over at OccupyProWrestling.com and check out their merchandise. I believe it's linked right here at What a Maneuver. That you also what mentioned earlier. What a Maneuver. Yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff there. I want to get. I love the wrestling explains it all, and also the and I believe this popped up on Lucha Underground last week. The Legends of the Lucha Temple shirt, which oh, he's wearing yeah. right there too. There it is. Yes, yes, yes. Represent. Go get the merch. Go support them. OccupyProWrestling.com. Which leads us yes, into sir. Alex. What? So so some stuff's going on with e- <laughs> so some stuff's going on with efeds. Is that right? Yes, some stuff is going on with e feds. Explain so, to me. So I am not I have not done e feds. I have not uh, been involved with this. I think we talked about it years ago. Maybe you or somebody else was on the show talking about it. I think maybe Doc Remedy might be in on, on this kind of stuff uh back in the day. Um so so what 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 first of all, can you explain uh briefly e feds to us? Uh oh. Are you with me, Alex? Alex, Alex. Uh oh, did I bump? I bumped the mic. I wonder if that's what I made will, everything hang go. One second. I'm sorry. Give me one second. Uh oh, we got an issue. We got a technical issue. So we're gonna vamp for a moment. Dave, are you with us? I am with you. Do you know anything about efeds until Alex comes back to us? We know nothing of efeds. You know, we're the cat knows. Hearing about efeds. The cat doesn't know anything about efeds. Leo, do you know anything about efeds? <laughs> Nope, not quite. Nope. Wow. It, we just became that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, you just found a message board for eFeds? You, just make sure you don't accidentally get into the fan fiction message board because those get really dicey. They used to they used to read those on the was it on our? Would they do it on our, our YouTube page? Like Eamon and Mike used to read these really interesting. Yeah, yeah, those really like. Um, yeah. I don't. We lost Matt. We lost Alex right in the middle of his segment. All right, uh, I'm going to move on then. Dropping it in the notes. Okay, I got something coming from producer Missy E Federation. <laughs> I think I want to wait for him <laughs> rather than read the Wikipedia. You want me to read this? All right. At least it's, we wait till the last half hour of the show to lose, to fall off the rails here, Rob. Uh, <laughs> an E-Federation also types it as E-Federation without the hyphen. Uh, E-Fed or just Fed uh, is a fantasy wrestling league or promotion in E-Wrestling. Operated electronically and is based on professional wrestling. Formed in 1995? With a small group of people and four e feds that e- with that email based feds. This is not this is not great. No, I'm not reading the definition of role playing. <laughs> Sounds like Uh no. All right, no, no. I'm back. I'm He's back. back. Alex, Here we, we already I read the Wikipedia. We have a cat butt on the on the camera. It's all falling apart. Uh, at least we, at least we read Beautiful. almost all the sponsor ads by now. Uh, <laughs> uh slices on Broadway. Yes. Places like that. All right, Alex. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> All right. So yeah. Okay. So you you you, you touched on some of the e and stuff. So yeah, you know, e fitting has a long history. Uh, back in the day, there were feds that you would send various things about your character through the mail. Uh, as the internet became more of a thing, you had your your AOL group chats and what have you. And uh, as Joey Janela yeah, is probably so- very familiar with. <laughs> uh but yeah so i uh so the main reason i really wanted to talk about the e-fetting tonight was because earlier today uh someone asked jordan grace uh independent wrestler uh about the story about her ring name uh because there was some conversation about uh names and stuff and so she mentioned she well she responded saying that uh she used it in e-fetting and basically kept it when she started training. So, really, uh, this, yeah, and this really excited the e wrestling corner of Twitter <laughs> with a bunch of people, uh, some of whom I, I I kind of know through through the hobby, uh, kind of tweeting at her, and it was fun. Uh, we've had similar uh, revelations about guys like uh, Johnny Gargano, 
who used to e-fed. So, yeah, so e-fedding is a thing. And as I like to joke, it is essentially pretending to wrestle on the internet. Uh, there's all kinds of, of e-fedding out there. And the one I'm mo mostly into consists of uh, creative writing uh, competitions. That's probably the best way to put it. Uh, you put up a role play, which is the piece you write as your character. Uh, and then in, uh, in, in feds that are centered around role playing, you get judged on how good your role play was against the person you went up against or multiple people. It's great. It's fun. I've been doing it for 11 years this summer. Nice. And I'm not a shame. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's okay, so, Alex. You know, we're all friends here. It's all, it's all right. right. We're all friends here. It's a safe space here. On, on yes, the absolutely. The absolutely. Uh, yeah, so, no, yeah, so there's, you know, like I said, all kinds of different feds, and the part of the reason I was kind of glad I got to do this as an extension of the Occupy Pro Wrestling ad is uh, I I kind of, uh, I'm basically housing some e-fedding stuff within Occupy Pro Wrestling because uh, I, what was it, late last year, I uh, opened up the Occupy Pro Wrestling community, mm -hmm. uh, which used to be a set of forums for a podcast that was dedicated to e-fedding called the e-fed Eats podcast they had their own set of forums and there was a lot of e-fedding history to it and things got changed around when they changed uh, the focus of their podcast and late last year it was decided well we need to kind of move this over uh or i i need someone to either take it over or we have to shut it down and i am my <laughs> And I, in my own roundabout way, was like, well, I'm looking for some way to help promote a, a more community-based site anyway. And I really don't like losing a lot of history. I'm, I'm a bit of a historian about certain things. Uh, so I offered to take it over. And that's why, you know, the, the forums are now the Occupy Pro Wrestling forums. And it's home to EW Planet, which used to be in the Fed community back in the early 2000s. And I I resurrected the brand for trying to bring people together for the hobby. And uh, it also houses uh, something called the Experts, which is an inner Fed, which used, well, yeah, in those days was basically you had different Feds kind of coming together for shows kind of similar to like your NWA and United Wrestling Network, but for e it, it It sounds kind of crazy, but... I've I've had a lot of fun with it. So well, from the chat room, uh, Matt Mike is saying, and this might be from earlier in the conversation. Is this your uh, roundabout way of saying that you want to start a WMS uh, eFed because uh, because he he's he's down for it? <laughs> well, no, this is my roundabout way of trying to plug all this eFedding stuff. There you go. Uh, quite frankly, well, you got you but, got uh, Mad. Looks like you got Mad Mike. You got Alex Miller down for this in the chat room. So uh, yeah, and I, I and I and I also well I also I did also promise to do a couple plugs for feds that I've been a part of and am a part of, uh, old school wrestling, which is actually a site partner of Occupy Pro Wrestling. Uh, you'll find that at weareosw.com. They've been running for, I believe, two to three years now or so. And they've done really, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's more emphasized on, it's more of an emphasis on kind of old school gimmicks and uh, stuff like that. Uh, it kind of dwells into the supernatural as some more recent shows have done. Uh, I've had a couple different characters on there. Uh, and it, it's just a lot of fun. And it's what they call a micro-fed, which gets even more fun to explain because that has a much shorter word limit. So you don't have to worry about trying to write small novels. <laughs> so there, there's that. There's a, a Fed called the EWC, which has been around since 1997. So they have a lot of history to them. And awesome. there's links to that. There's links to that over on Occupy Pro Wrestling and on EW Planet. If if you have any questions, you can always message me or send me a tweet. Uh, just let me know. But there yeah, you, there, you know, I like I said, been doing this for a while. Love the hobby. <laughs> and I'm, I was really happy. I, I joked at the time. I was like, I was really happy that there was a little bit of chatter about it on Twitter in a Good. much bigger perspective. Good. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That makes me, it makes me think about when we did the RPG, um, with, uh, 
oh, I forget who that was we interviewed, and we actually did like he he DM'd a game of the uh, the like D and D style wrestling game that we did. So like we need to bring that back around again uh, too. So a lot of cool ways to get into this stuff. Uh, why why is it this week we we talk e fetting? I want to talk about how one of my characters once killed someone in the ring because of, of a botched spots as Mad Mike. <laughs> There you go. Well, um, well, one of these weeks he needs to be on. Uh, programming note: uh, I, We will not be here live next week, but we do have a pre-recorded show, uh, Impact Therapy Two, with Shirley Doe and Mad Mike, talking about um, all those years that they um, slogged through and hurt themselves trying to review uh, TNA Impact Wrestling. Uh, specifically, we did talk about a lot of the Hulk Hogan era, of course. Very timely that we recorded two weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> uh, era, the Eric Bischoff, Hulk Hogan era of um, of uh, Impact Wrestling, amongst uh, uh, other things, including the old Nashville Asylum uh, Fairgrounds uh, era as well. And for some reason, we just started talking about weird uh, horror movies because that's what uh, Shirley Doe writes about now at BS- BNS about movies. Uh, so that will be up in your feeds next week. The videos will be released on Facebook and YouTube um, on uh, whenever this show usually goes live uh, for the stream. So you can sit down and watch Mayhem at 9 p.m. Eastern time next week on the page. It just won't be actually live anymore. I will be at the Gathering of the Juggalos this week, which is always fun. You guys can watch my social media. It's going to get weird for the next four days. Just warning you now, at Sorgatron on the Twitter, uh, Instagrams, and I'm sure my Facebook as well. I'm bringing a GoPro. <laughs> I have some a ideas. Cases of Fago. What's that? I said, and I hope you bring in a couple cases of Fago. Yeah, yeah, too. as you do. As a peace offering. As we, as a peace offering. This is my people. This is yeah. this show wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Juggalos. What is a Juggalo? I don't know. What I know. <laughs> 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 Anyways, uh, See, I was gonna say, and I hope your GoPros, I hope your GoPro makes it back. From, oh, my GoPros gather. will be fine. My Go- my GoPros have been hit and, hit by Baja cars. They'll be fine in an ICP mosh pit. I'm considering wearing the GoPro headgear during the ICP show. I want to see a video of you doing that. That would be great. I can't take a video of me taking the video. Why, well, I man? Can't I? Want to have well, enough that's cameras. why you get somebody. That's why you have friends that film you doing dumb stuff, like attaching a GoPro to your head at the gathering of the Juggalos. <laughs> this is my world. This is where I feel comfortable. Uh, and yes, uh, Mad Mike, I can. I, maybe I can get away with calling a Juggalo Pro uh, when I use it out there too. So, um, anyways, uh, so uh, I. I this this has a wrestling angle to it. I wanted to show you some of the weird stuff that's happening because along with the four days of uh, camping and and concerts and and weird and and nudity Wonderful. probably not my nudity. It depends on what happens. Um, but there's three <laughs> nights of pro wrestling, including Bloody Mo- Mania, Oddball Wrestling, and Battle of the Sexes. Which looks like it's just a bunch of uh, intergender wrestling. Friend of the show, uh, the Savage Gentleman's going to be there. That is not the right nerd. That is not Lewis the nerd. That's a fake nerd. Sam Adonis is going to be there. Um, Congo Kong, Tommy Dreamer. Uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Joey Janela is at least there for two nights. Actually, no, three nights. He's taking on Teddy Hart, you guys. I wonder if Whoa. Teddy Hart's going to bring his cat. Is he still bringing his cats to wrestling? <laughs> But um and Dog I love Joey Janela. <laughs> <laughs> Joey Janela around Juggalos is gonna be an interesting oh, experience. Unbelievable. I mean <laughs> I, I I honestly want to go just to see this happen. I know, right? Yeah. Well <laughs> Um, and, and I'm loving the matches that they have list for oddball wrestling, which is going to be a lot of death match. Like, um, uh, homeless, homeless Jimmy is taking on mash pick, mosh pit, Mike in a house versus hair match. Mm-hmm. Process that house versus hair match. And I also want to find out what, hold on. I need to find it here. Um, Brian idol, who I think is a big name over in evolve. If I'm not mistaken against spider, Nate Webb, which you've, probably heard of spider nate webb in a pull your bitch match what is in a what pull your bitch match okay is it p-o-o-l or p-u-l-l pull i don't know what that means i have no idea 
What I can't wait to find out. Also, I want to find out what a marijuana may- mayhem match is. Last time there was a marijuana match, they had to smoke a joint every 90 seconds. And there's a lot of their giant things of Funyuns uh, and everything were involved, too. And also, mm. Joey Tanella will wrestle, once again, the Invisible Man in a grudge match. Hey, sorry. Yes. Hey, sorry. Anybody can take it to him. Yes. I just want to point out that I'm very grateful that WWE has been kind enough to allow John Cena to wrestle Joey Janela at the Gathering <laughs> of the Juggalos. Right. That would be awesome. <laughs> Also, on Battle of the Sexes, I wanted to point out that there is a Until Death Do We Part match between a husband and a wife, Terry Calloway, and Jeff Cannonball. Mm. Because why not? Oh, boy. It's weird. At it's awesome. No, so where is this? this where is, is this place? This is in Thornville, Ohio, on this side of Columbus. It had to, well, <laughs> it had to be somewhere where, like... <laughs> Like the police can't get there soon enough. Like exactly. They, oh they no. Got one no, cop. dude. They did this. They did this three <laughs> years. They t- they went to Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma, I think, last year, and they're back for this year. It's supposed to be the final one. The sheriff's patrol. The the cops are there, man. And the cops look like this guy right here. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's Barney the Fife. it's the sheriff's department, man. They don't give Barney a crap Fife. unless you're trying to sell heroin. <sighs> That's the only time I saw them going after somebody. So I just, that is the level of event that we're going to. It is, uh, they're calling it Whoopstock this year. And uh, yes. There it is. There you go. There you go. And they're actually going to have tribute <laughs> bands to like the old Woodstock performers. Like there's a Jimi Hendrix tribute band, um, you know, before Guar plays, of course. Um, oh, <laughs> I love that. I love uh, the Guar tribute band. It's like Jimi Hendrix, but it's like zombie Jimi Hendrix. Wouldn't it be great that if Guar just did like a Grateful Dead tribute before they played as Guar? I see. Oh, that'd be amazing. I I want to see Guar in that setting at a festival because typically oh, when they're amazing. like in theaters and stuff yeah, and they're yeah. spraying everybody and the, you know, whatever. But like at a festival, you can have like cannons. Yep. Just... yep. Uh, they played uh, two years, last time they were here two years ago um, at, at this venue uh, for the gathering and it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, cool. Yep. Uh, so you're probably going to see some social media over the weekend from me or just anybody else because Joey Janelle is involved. So you're going to see some social media around this weekend. Can't wait. Uh, so look out for that. I'm sure there'll be footage. They don't usually put these these events out, I don't think, in any fashion. They're filming them of some sort, but I, I just kind of see them in commercials and stuff. So, uh, mm-hmm. so it's going to be an experience. I'll be letting you guys know about it. Uh, wait, Joey Janelle, actually, is he doing three nights? Yeah, he's there all three nights. He's got Teddy Hart. He's fighting the Invisible Man, and he's fighting, and I think this is his girlfriend, um, Penelope Ford, who I, I've seen her here as yep. well. She's pretty good. Um, I think she fought Britt Baker here at IWC. So, so yeah, yeah that's they, going to be my adventure week. They uh, they tagged together in Chikara recently. There you go. There you go. Uh, I, love the, I love the pull your bitch match. <laughs> says Alex. Alex out there. Um, yeah. I love that Mike was going for the same John Cena joke you were. Anyways, speaking of indie wrestling, and now we're turning into that show, uh, you guys can check out. We got a lot going on at IndieWrestling.us. The uh, new IWC Threat Level Midnight is out we, uh, with Bruce Pritchard as a part of that. By the way, uh, as I, I disclosed last night on the wrap-up, Bruce Pritchard loves the Miss Pac-Man. Uh, he was feverishly playing that when uh, you could say he had Miss Pac-Man fever. Uh, when I was going in and trying to set up for the event on Saturday night. Uh, also, Sam Adonis, part of that, there was a CMLL showcase. There's a clip of that over on the uh, Facebook and YouTube page for IndieWrestling.us. Or if you enjoy, uh, we've been putting out uh, uh, WWE Raw commercial break clips on Twitter during Raw on IndieWrestling.us's uh, Twitter, uh, US Indie Wrestling on Twitter. Um, but in the meantime, on our uh, and also uh, all of our new titles and a lot of our backlogs starting to go up, on our new Vimeo service. Um, if you hit up a video on demand uh, link on IndieWrestling.us, you'll go over there. If you, you can rent or purchase, and it'll work pretty much like iTunes, but in the Vimeo system. And I know uh, Bradley out there and a few others have been uh, picking up the titles and uh, able to 
uh, bring the Vimeo app on their phone where you can Chromecast it or you can download that on uh, several devices like Roku. And uh, anything you purchase or rent should be uh, viewable on your television in full. Uh, we're putting those up there, of course, in 720 HD. And I hope to upgrade those in the near future as well. But uh, go check that out, IndiaWrestling.us. So you can celebrate like it's still the 4th of July here this month. Buy one, get one of the old digital download uh, uh, versions as, as well, our old legacy digital download system that has the way back catalog, including IWC from 2002, where you can see a very young Colt Cabana and CM Punk uh, hanging out in Pittsburgh and doing some cool matches. Uh, so go check those out, IndieWrestling.us. Um, you can... Is there a code for the buy one, get one? So get it on the receipt. There you go. Buy one and you'll get a receipt for uh, a free one. Buy one, get one at IndieWrestling.us in the digital download section on the site. Just want to make, sure that, make that clear there. Uh, so thanks for that. And, of course, you can check out Indie Mayhem Show uh, programming. You know, there, there will not be an Indie Mayhem Show for the next two weeks either due to scheduling issues. Uh, but we hope to return that there in the first week of August. Uh, in the meantime, there's uh, well well over 200 uh, interviews for you guys to go through in that archive. And a lot of those listed over there at IndieWrestling.us. Hey, guys, it's time to find out what you learned in wrestling this week. Well, I learned that just like we've always been at war with East Asia, Roman Reigns is my favorite wrestler. And he will always be my favorite wrestler because apparently we do not have a choice other than <laughs> Roman Reigns. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> it's like they pulled a practical joke on us on Monday night. <sighs> okay. It only took four years to get the joke through. But yeah, yes. yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I know, I know. What about you, Alex? I learned how to count down from 10 to 1. Hey, you know what? Minute. So did we. So did we. Oh, boy. Oh, Rob, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Or, or if you'd like, what did you learn from Dojo Pro? Well, I will say that I learned from wrestling this week that you can say really horrible, terrible, offensive things and be a terrible person and be remembered as a great wrestler <laughs> uh, and still get your place in history. Uh, that can't happen. Uh, and uh, what I learned from Dojo Pro is... Uh, <laughs> is how fun it is to be a part of the indie wrestling community. I, it's something that I am somewhat new to. I used to go to a lot of shows, but uh, it's been fun to see fans from all over the, the country of wrestling uh, embracing what we're trying to do with that that show on Amazon Prime Video and uh, DojoPro.co. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to co-sign on what Rob said. I learned that uh, racist remarks... And a sex tape get you three years suspension from the Hall of Fame. We have a scale now. We have a scale, apparently. Uh, but that's... don't start counting, Sorg. Don't get, you know, no, no, no. Don't start counting. Ten, yeah. Nine. Uh, no, Eight. no. Stop. Stop. Oh. Oh. And of course, ne don't don't agree to do the sex tape on purpose instead of secretly taping, because then you're banned for life. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Oh, jeez. But you can't take down Gawker. They sold it for like 1.4 million or something. <laughs> also, didn't stop Paige from becoming general manager, I guess. Uh, anyways, uh, Wheels <laughs> learned that he's obsessed with uh, Twitch and wrestling. Thanks, Sorg. Uh, yeah. Uh, so for the last week, and uh, hopefully I can keep it up here while while I'm traveling. Uh, Indie Wrestling at US has been uh, streaming a lot of old RWA, IWC, Rise Wrestling, uh, uh, Premier Championship Wrestling, and I think there's some prime time. Or I'm sorry, Prime Wrestling in there as well as well as some old Indie Mayhem uh, uh, interviews. Uh, but uh, go check out the IndieWrestling.us uh, Twitch page, too, for some free live stream wrestling. You never know what's going to pop up. I never know what's on. I, it's on Shuffle, guys. Seriously. I, it, it could, I don't know what played in the last 24 hours, but I see a lot of people are enjoying it and like liking to see that. Uh, Mad Mike learned that rabbits do not fuck around. What does... Oh, yeah, it must be Lucha Underground. I didn't catch Lucha Underground yet from last week. Uh... <laughs> And uh, what else do we have here? There's more. There's more. Um, Tina learned that uh, uh, that learned in wrestling that Pittsburgh crowds are triggered by countdown clocks. It's staring right at us, man. It's it's. By the way, if you didn't like the 30 minute Iron Man match, uh, I said it right uh, from Sunday night. There's a wonderful one from last month at Rise Wrestling with a Y over at IndieWrestling.us. You can rent for probably two or three ninety nine. 
Um, here we go, Steelers. Here we go. See, I seriously did not hear that all night. <laughs> I think there was only... Sorry, it's funny you mention a rise because uh, rise with an eye also had an Iron Woman match. There you go. Minutes. It's going around. Uh, rise of the knockouts, which you can find on Twitch. There you go. <laughs> Alex Miller learned that if you are the final show in a historic building, the Bakerfield Bakersfield Dome, uh, you will get some great people coming. What are they doing at the Bakersfield Dome, Alex? I just pre- I, other Alex that's here in the field. Oh, right, for, right, right. Because yeah. so I figure you're in the area. Dome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Bakersfield is in there. That's like that's like telling uh, Eamon all the different places in Texas. You know what? The Wait, area. I remember where Bakersfield is, and I didn't even – I was in – yeah, it was an hour away from where uh, I was an hour okay. away from L.A. It's okay. It's okay. I'll wait for your apology. No, I'm just kidding. You're fine. Um, no, uh, so the Bakersfield Dome, uh, which has had a lot of history, uh, I keep thinking 70 years or so, uh, Alex Miller might actually know more than I do on this, but basically, uh, they've, from what I understand, the building has been sold and will be demolished mm. in the in the very near future. So there's going to be a final show, and that's going to be held by Vendetta Pro Wrestling. And there's a lot, quite a few people coming to that show, and so it, I believe it's, I think it's a free event. I'm not entirely positive. You can actually find more info on that at uh, SoCal Uncensored, the website, not the ROH table. No, no, yes. Uh, SCU. Uh, you can find that at SoCalUncensored.com. There's more info on that. There's um, a lot more info on I that. I was so, saying that Joey Ryan versus Marty School, he thinks is going to ha- be happening. So that's okay. going to be fun. That's okay. going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's definitely going to be a lot. You know, it's one of those... I think they're pr- promoting it as a fan appreciation night type thing nice. too. So Alpha Club versus Board yeah. Club was not discussed. What? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I've, oh, I've been watching oh, Being Alpha the Elite Club. too. Uh, Alpha Club versus Bullet Club. That is happening. That's that's not Bakersfield. No, that's no, that's going to be uh, at Jericho, sea. That's a Jericho cruise. That's a Jericho cruise. Yeah, Young Bucks and Jericho against uh, the Bullet Club. On international waters. International so waters. Whatever you want to call it. Because it can't happen on sea, or it can't happen on land. It can't happen in the, on a lake. It has to happen at air. sea. Or in the air. No, no. By land, by sea, or by air. Rob Johnston, thank you so much for joining us in this craziness we call the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I hope we uh, filled our namesake appropriately for you tonight. Oh, so much mayhem, and it was a blast, and it was good to meet you guys uh, that I have not met yet. And thanks for letting me plug this show that I'm really, really proud of. There you go. Well, check out where can people find Dojo Pro again? Uh, you can find it on Amazon Prime, uh, and uh, it's free to Amazon Prime users. You can get it there. I think you could buy it per episode or per season, uh, and I think there's going to be a few other options coming up really soon as to where you can watch it. But nice. dojopro.co.co, that's and, the website. And I think Tina uh, pointed out that you can get Amazon Prime, not just like the $100 a year thing, but you can actually get just the video Prime for like $12 a month. So Yeah, there's a 30-day free trial. <laughs> <laughs> And Main say that you learned, a, if they give you a little, little comment box, tell them how you learned about it on the Wrestling Mayhem show. Yeah. <laughs> and not Rob Johnson, announcer for uh, Dojo Pro. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what those analytics look like, so I just, <laughs> I, I had my parents sign up for 30 days. <laughs> they canceled it after they watched the show. I'm not saying to do that. Don't give me in trouble. I'm not saying to do it. I'm just saying, <laughs> you can. Alex Carr is <laughs> OccupyProWrestling.com, of course. Yep. Thank you for having me here on the uh, E Wrestling Mayhem show. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> it should be another uh, podcast. Sure. There you go. Uh, and- it might be. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, I also wanted to uh, quickly get this out about. Uh, so yesterday was Prime Day, and what better way to celebrate all the Prime Day sa- savings by also getting Dojo Pro on Amazon Prime? There you go. Uh, My man. Wow. Hey. <laughs> wow. I'm all sure to say that. <laughs> Wow. We, s- we support the hell out of Friends of the Show on this show. I'm just saying <laughs> no, we're right. all buying the Elias album because he was on years ago. We're, go- we're making sure everybody's going to check JoJo Pro. That's what we do on the Mayhem Nation. Amazon's going to wonder why there was a sudden u- uptick in, in Prime membership. So. There you go. 100% strictly from the Pittsburgh area. Because <laughs> <laughs> they can't count the 30 day free. Hey, 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 hey. No, um, but yeah, so yeah, thanks again for having me on. Uh, and like I said before, if anybody has any questions about e-vetting stuff, hit me up. I look forward to talking about it. 
And of course, Dave Potter of the Tiny Shutter Podcast that you can pick up on Apple Podcasts and other fine podcast places. Uh, most definitely. And thanks again so much for having me on, Sork. When are you starting an a Instagram account, account for your cats like Alistair Black's? <laughs> I've thought about it. I've thought about but uh, even that's a little... For First of all, I'm not as creative as him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And of course, check out everything WrestlingMayhemShow.com, SorgatronMedia.com for all the great uh, stuff going on in the podcast world around uh, us and our partners, including the awesome cast, which Rob was on before, uh, including uh, the broadcast podcast, including uh, Comic Book Pit, who actually there's a little bit of wrestling talk coming up in the Ed Piscor episode uh that they were just recording here that'll be going up here shortly i know they were editing it tonight for the comic book pit uh he's the writer of the x-men um uh oh crap it's uh escaping my head right now the uh grand design x-men grand design books uh that, that are that are in process i know uh, volume one is out volume two is is in in the works and coming out very very soon a uh, really great discussion. I think it's going to be the next two episodes, if I'm not mistaken, of the comic book. But please go check it out. And he does have some interesting wrestling connections, actually, in the area that they talk about on that show, too. So please uh, check out our friends there. And, uh, of course, check out everything going on with our wrestling friends at IWC, RWA, Rise Wrestling, and Premier Championship Wrestling. A lot of cool stuff coming out of the area, uh, Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Yes, we're not holding against. Cleveland has good wrestling, even though they're Cleveland. It's okay by oh, us. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank, thank, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Mayhem Nation. Thank you, Producer Missy. Until next time, Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Don't give up what you want. Take it back. Wait for the perfect time to attack. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.